Happy New Year, everybody, 2021. I don't wanna talk about 2020, we'll put that behind us and let's, let's look forward. So back again, Chef Todd, it's been quiet for a while, put up a couple quick episodes in the last couple of weeks, so I'll get back in the game better and do some more uh, full production shows. So I was gonna do one big series on the kitchen equipment, but I think it'd be easier if I break it up into three, three parts. Um, so we'll do pots and pans as one show, and we'll do uh, cut, cutlery and knives in the second show and then the third show will probably be cutting boards and kitchen utensils and stuff like that so hope you can join me um, should be good we're gonna start off today's show with pots and pans so let's get started as you can see I'll show you my setup a lot going on here all different types and sizes and you're probably wondering what the heck why does somebody need so so many but they all have a special use and function uh, so we'll go through these and give a brief explanation and hopefully, again, help you in the kitchen as well. Okay, you saw my little introduction video. It's about all my supply of pots and pans. You're probably thinking, what the heck is going on? Why does somebody need so many? So they all have their unique purpose. So we'll go through each kind of phase of model and uh, hopefully it'll help you. So we're going to start with saucepans. As you can see, I have... Actually five, I guess it's one of all, all different sizes. I have some little ones. This is a, uh, a one quart one. This one's a even smaller uh, three cup one. So these are good for heating up gravies, uh, sauces and soups. Uh, they have a glass lid, which is nice. So you can see inside as you're cooking. You don't want your food boiling over on the stove or you know, if you want a nice low simmer, you can control the heat better, so that helps. And then we get into a more medium sized one. You know, this is more for boiling water or batches of vegetables. Uh, this is a two quart one. And then this is my latest one, the, the Big Daddy. This is a big four quart one, nonstick, solid. One thing when you're picking a pan out is you want a, a nice solid one. So you can hear when you tap it, you know, it's got some weight to it when you feel it. Uh, so that's important. So when it comes to you know prices of pots and pans, you can spend a thousand dollars. Copper is the most expensive. It conducts the heat the best. Or you can get your you know basic department store, you know twenty dollar a pan uh, per pan. But I kind of the model is you kind of get what you pay for. So I would recommend you know if you can afford it, a decent set. You're gonna spend at least three or four hundred dollars. But the good news is it's gonna last you. They should last you. Um, this set I've had for 15 years, so basically brand new. Again, as long as you take care of them, there shouldn't be any issues. So again, you spend a little bit of money and in the long run, it'll help. But one thing, you know, talk about quality. So these are nice, you know, again, this is a nice name brand set. It's solid, this is what I like. But this one right here is more of a backup. I bought it at a local department store. Um, you know, it's probably 15, 20 dollars, but it's, it's cheap. Um, it's kind of, you can hear, it doesn't have much weight to it. it. It actually flexes when I, you know, I can bend it, which means it's not, it's not very solid. So it doesn't conduct the heat well. It doesn't boil water as well as you would a nice heavy duty pan. Obviously cast iron, um, very popular these days. And I have some cast iron we'll get into in the next, uh, next, next section of the show. So just keep that in mind. Again, when you're you know, go to a store, pick up a pan, feel it. If it feels heavy, that's good. The more weight, the better. It means it's solid. Um, and then, you know, obviously you have to spend a little money, so. All right, next section, I want to get into our saute pans. Uh, everyone has a few of these. Again, they're just kind of big and flat. They're good for uh, sauteing chicken breasts. Um, you, could do, you could do a little bit of stir fry in them. Um, stuff like that. So. Again, they come different sizes. This is a nice stainless steel one. Again, solid, good for if I'm doing dinner parties and I'm doing like a chicken piccata and I'm sauteing a bunch of chicken breasts. Uh, this one, again, the same set. This one's more of a multifunctional, it's kind of like a fryer. It's got the handle, you could put some oil in it and then it has the glass lid as well. So that would be, you know, for maybe deeper batches of, you could fry fish in it and that. And then everyone has these, are these, you know, non-stick, you know, you call them almost egg pans. And I have three different sizes. I have a little one, 
So this one's good for, you know, just make it for an omelet for myself. And then there's a big one, you know, for probably making two omelets at a time. And then I got another big one, uh, kind of took it from my mom's place. She gave it to me, I didn't take it literally, but she let me take it. Uh, a bigger one for, again, if you're doing eggs and you could actually do one big breakfast in this. You could do the eggs on one side or bacon and sausage the other, and then that kind of would help. So again, just having different sizes helps. You never know when you need, you know, to cook more food for people at a time. So it's just another thing to keep in mind. But you know, saute pans are pretty conventional. Same standard, you wanna look for quality versus cheap. And then, you know, the nonstick, you know, that's kind of popular these days. Different kind, types of nonstick out there. I just stick with the traditional Teflon or whatever the brand is. So that's what I know. So one, one thing I wanted to share with you, um, if you notice on the camera, there's, when I, I stack these in, in my cupboard, there's, you know, obviously you don't want these to get scratched. So a good way to do this is if you put a paper towel in between them and you take another pan and put on top, obviously that pan doesn't scratch the one underneath. So I learned this in culinary school. So thanks to my chefs back in the day. But again, I would recommend doing that because if you just put the pan inside the pan, eventually you're going to just scratch up the one underneath and it's going to lose its, its you know, nonstick coating. So again, take care of what you have and it'll last you. All right, next section I want to talk about are just kind of some more independent uh, pans that you may have. One is a stock pot, obviously pretty standard. Uh, this is a, again, with the same set I've had, you've seen. This is a eight quart one, so gotta have one of these. Actually having probably two, two of these sizers, a good idea. Again, making good for making big batches of chili or soup, uh, pasta sauce, so you never know when you can. The worst thing to do is run out of space when you're cooking. Uh, so it's better to have a bigger pot, even if it only gets used once or twice a year. So I got a good, good, good quality stock pot. Here's what a standard skillet. Uh, I think it has one of these. They're, they're parents for years. Again, this is non-stick, so great for pancakes. Um, you know, you can fry eggs on it, bacon. So I use it, you know, quite a bit. And it, you know, it's I got to take care of the non-stick. This was probably 10, 15 years old. You can see the bottom is pretty. Corroded. There's not much you can do about that. It just develops over the time. Um, I guess you could use some elbow grease and scrub that off, but you know, no harm. And then the last one is, you know, probably one of the unique things is a wok, having a good wok. So uh, these are handy for stir fries. You could, uh, you know, make pasta in them, but they're kind of helpful for the stir fry because they're deep and, you know, if you're tossing around your vegetables and chicken, you know, you don't want to lose them on the pan. And, has a big cover, which helps for, you know, if you're kind of want to splatter your chicken all over when it's frying all over the, the, the cooktop. So the cover helps control all that. So again, uh, more basics you should have for your kitchen. All right, I was going to end this episode with uh, the big daddy, I'll call it, which is kind of the rage these days, is cast iron. So cast iron is kind of unique. It's been around, gosh, probably 100 years. It was popular. You know, 50 years ago, if not 100 years ago, your grandparents probably have a cast iron in their in their cabin, or they still do. And that kind of fell off popularity in the 80s and 90s when nonstick uh, was developed and became popular. But it's come back now because, again, when I talk about the sturdiness of cast iron. So talk about heavy duty. I mean, these are solid. Um, these are, I have three of them. This is a, I believe, an eight inch pan. Um, again, great for, you could fry chicken in this, you could put it in the oven. Um, it's very versatile. This one, even bigger, is again, again, it's more like a fryer, so it's deeper. Again, I fry fish in it, which is great. Control the splatter. This one I bought at a, kind of an auction house, probably 20 years ago. And I think I paid $20 for it. Um, I don't know how old it is. It's got a stamp on it. Uh, kind of like Antiques Roadshow. I'm not an antique person, but... I would imagine a pan like this today would be, you know, forty or fifty dollars, you know, retail. And lastly is um, this one, which is a, you know, again this is cast iron. People call it the Dutch oven. So very, very good to have if you can get it. They're not cheap. Uh, some of the name brand ones, which you see, are three hundred dollars just for one pan, which is a little too much in my, my opinion. This is a uh, local 
brand uh, made in the USA. I won't promote them. I don't get sponsorships, but um, you can find them at your local store. And I think I paid maybe $30 for this, but again, it's great. Again, heavy. This thing, this pan alone probably weighs, you know, 10 pounds, I would say. Um, so it's great to go in the oven. I make, you probably see my episodes. I think I made a gumbo with it and chili. So again, I recommend adding cast iron to your, to your kitchen inventory. All right, thanks for this series. Uh, we'll put this one up and then we'll step into the next one, uh, which will probably be another couple days. So I'll do these in, in bits and pieces. Thanks.